Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of McDowell, also known as Sitlington's Hill, located in Highland County, Virginia, on May 8, 1862. Confederate Major General Thomas Stonewall Jackson had spent the last several weeks rebuilding his army after the Battle of Kernstown, attaining almost 9,000 additional troops and knowing full well that Union Major General John C. Fremont had sent U.S. Brigadier General Robert H. Milroy with at least 3,500 men as an advanced guard of the full Union Army. Shortly before Jackson could do anything about it, Milroy was joined by Brigadier General Robert C. Schenck's brigade of 2,500 men. Jackson came across the Union forces within sight of the town of McDowell. Jackson had already secured Sitlington's Hill, a ridge that had a large open field with forests surrounding it. Jackson surveyed the Union position as he met with Confederate Brigadier General Edward Allegheny Johnson. During this time, Brigadier General Robert C. Schenck arrived from Franklin, West Virginia and took overall command of the Union forces. Deploying his artillery on Cemetery Hill near McDowell's Presbyterian Church to defend a bridge over the Bull Pasture River. The infantry was deployed along the river for about 800 yards. There, Schenck and Milroy sent out skirmishers towards Jackson forces at Siltington's Hill. When the Union received reports of the Confederate artillery being moved towards the hill, Milroy responded by attempting to stop the Confederate movement. Milroy personally led his forces up the ravines that wound their way up the hill. Meanwhile, Stonewall Jackson had ordered the artillery to stop going up the hill. It proved to be too difficult to withdraw the artillery if the battle went poorly. The Union responded by firing up the hill trying to support Milroy's infantry approach. The Union infantry were heartened by the artillery support and continued up the steep slopes to close with the Confederate line at the top. The fighting was fierce and heavy casualties were inflicted on the Confederates. Being on top of the hill meant their silhouettes were more visible and made them easier targets. The Confederate commanders attempted to make their men pull back to a more defendable position, but it is said the infantry would not retreat one step. It was during this time that Confederate Commander Johnson was wounded severely in his ankle and was temporarily replaced by Brigadier General William B. Taliaferro. By the end of the day, Milroy ordered his men to pull back, realizing they were too outnumbered to be able to win the hill. The odds were always against him being outnumbered so severely and attacking uphill. They stayed for a short time, then pulled completely out of McDowell, leaving it open for Stonewall Jackson's foot cavalry to secure McDowell on May 9th. Estimated casualties were approximately 259 Union troops. This included 34 killed, 220 wounded, and 5 captured, while the Confederate Army suffered 500 casualties, 146 killed, 382 wounded, and 4 captured. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.